All right, good morning, everyone, and thank you for coming back to the 30-Day Profit Challenge. Today is day 12, and we're going to talk about returns and exchanges. So I want to thank you for being here again. It's always a pleasure to see your warm faces, even though I can't see them necessarily. Hopefully you can see mine, but it's always good to see the people that are showing up day in and day out. You know, we're at day 12, and we're almost halfway through this 30-Day Challenge. So I really want to thank you for coming along for the ride. And uh, thank you for being here. It's obviously been uh, a challenge for some maybe to get up at 7.30 mountain time, 6.30 if you're on the West Coast. But hopefully on the East Coast at 9.30, you're just getting into your day. And uh, this has been a good uh, source of inspiration for you day in and day out. So today, like I said, we're going to talk a bit about returns. And so without further ado, let's dive into it. Just get the screen share going. And off we go. So as I mentioned, we're in day 12. We're going to start talking today about returns. And you know, last time we talked about uh, the payment processing fees. Well, guess what? Returns are probably one of the biggest opportunities in your e-commerce business to optimize your profit margin, but as well as one of the biggest opportunities for you to further enhance the customer experience when we talk about customer margin. So today, what we're going to talk a bit about is why returns are such a big deal, because they kind of are. You know, if, if we looked at uh, the order margin tree, um, we're kind of almost the way through it. We've talked about payment processing yesterday, and now we're going to talk about returns today. Then we'll talk a bit about discounts. And then that should wrap us up with where we're at in terms of our order margin tree. So let's talk a bit more about returns. Returns are kind of a big deal. These are some stats I pulled for you folks, just to kind of give you some context. You know, if they do, did a study way back in 2018, so not too far long ago, we're talking a year or two ago, um, they took a look at the, the NFR, which is basically the NRF is the National Retail Foundation. And what they do is they kind of track and monitor all of the retail stats across the industry, mainly with the US. So these stats were based in the United States. But what they looked at is, is in 2018, there was about $3.7 trillion worth of retail done in the overall business of retail for the US. Now, e-commerce of that is probably about 10%. So if you want to say 3.6 trillion is, you know, the overall retail, take 10% of that. And that's what e-commerce probably did. Now, what they're finding is, is that actually the amount of merchandise return as a percentage of all that total was 10% or basically $369 billion. So that's a lot of change. You know, if we did that math on e-commerce, we're probably talking about three, $337 billion in return dollars back to the merchants. So it's a pretty big deal. You know, if you, to put it into context, at that point when this report was pulled, Facebook as a company being traded on the stock market was worth $369 billion. So if it gives you any sort of context, there's a lot of people returning a lot of things. And so, you know, it's kind of become almost the new normal for us when we talk about e-commerce businesses or retail in general. Um, when you think about it, um, you know, with the, there's another report that I pulled here where if you look at it, about 48% of people have returned something online in the last 12 months. So for those of you that are consumers, I know I just did a return a couple weeks ago with Amazon. I bought a Dyson filter for my vacuum cleaner and guess what? It was the wrong size. And you know, the product description made it sound like it was all the right, uh, right specs. I thought it was the match for the right Dyson filter. I bought it on Amazon. I should have gone to Dyson in the first place, which I ended up doing, but uh, basically I was looking for a deal, but you know, I actually went through my own return process with Amazon recently as well. And uh, so, you know, it's pretty common for most people nowadays to be doing a return in their online business uh, as a consumer, but also it's probably common for you to expect that you're seeing returns come through in your business. Um, you know, what most, what's interesting is that almost one in two people or 49% of all people, before they're even ready to make a purchase, check out the return policy. They want their commitment folks. They're not ready to quite make that commitment. They're gonna check and see, am I gonna be able to return this product if I don't like it? or if it's not the right fit, or if I don't know this retailer, if maybe it's a first time purchaser. So there's a lot of opportunity there, a lot of reasons why people might be returning because they maybe just have that sort of buyer's remorse already kind of predestined in their mind. But there, you could also be a clothing retailer and you know I buy a lot of clothes online sort of thing. Sometimes I'll buy two of the same thing, but I'll buy it in two different sizes. 
because I'm not quite 100% sure what size is going to fit, right? And so what they found is about 40% of people actually have bought multiple items in a particular purchase simply because they know they're going to return one or two of those things on the particular order. So it just goes to show you the returns have become the new normal, particularly in the e-commerce world. And it's something that, you know, to be mindful of is it's, it's a big dollar amount and it's becoming the new normal. Now, if we go one more step further into this though, returns can actually yield you some profit. You know, this was a study that was done um, by, in partnership with Shopify and one of their other partners, Return Logic. And what this is showcasing is, is if you look at the graph on the sort of far left-hand side here, if we looked at the return rates, so we looked at the previous slides at about 48%, and you can see a lot of the scatter plots showing a lot of people are below in that 48% range probably. There's a few that are up into the 60s, 70s, and even 80s, close to 100. But what was interesting about is, is what they were actually buying in terms of the actual dollar value. What it was showcasing, the fact is that people that were returning stuff were probably in this sort of 20 to maybe $30 range in terms of what they were actually buying from a net sales perspective. But the more profitable customers, even though they're returning stuff, were buying at a lot higher average order value or a lot higher net sale value you know, upwards of the 70, 80 range. So when we looked at our average order value, when we went through the product margin tree last week, you know, if you look at that average order value, that was an average across the board. But you know, what, what a lot of people say, there's that sort of 80, 20 rule where 80% of people are gonna generate only 20% of your revenue. And then you're gonna have those really high profitable customers over here that are 20% of your op, op, uh, audience that are generating 80% of your revenue. And that's what you're kind of typically seeing on this scatter plot here is that the more profitable customers, even though they are returning things, are most likely gonna buy a lot more or spend a lot more on that particular order. So that's just something to keep in mind. So as we go one, step, one step further into this, let's look at a few scenarios then about perhaps how you can optimize your return rate for your e-commerce business. So we're gonna keep using the example we've been using over the last little while. We've been using that sort of $4,000 order mark and the million dollars in net sales which is gonna be basically a $250 average order value. So to make the math work, we're gonna use those three assumptions here when we go through, a step through a few scenarios. So let's take a look at that base case first of all. So let's say for example, and again, this is not your return rate. Your return rate could be higher than this, could be lower than this. And we'll maybe do a quick, quick Q&A or poll after this. But um, let's say for example, your return rate was in fact 48%. So on that 4,000 orders multiplied by 48%, that's gonna yield you 1,920 orders coming back to you off the top. So that's quite a bit, it's almost half, right? And if we did the same math, assuming the average order value held constant at $250, it'd be a $480,000 or 250 times your 1920 to get 480,000. Now, if we looked at that previous scenario that we just saw, maybe that average order value is a little bit lower because of the fact that it's maybe lower value people that are returning stuff or maybe it's higher value people that are returning stuff. We really don't know. So for the keep the math simple, we're gonna keep using that 250 number. So now let's take this one step further. What if you're able to reduce that 48% by, let's say a couple basis points, let's, let's a couple percentage points. Let's say if you could get it down to 46%, what that could translate into is basically a 4% reduction on those orders returned or a 4% reduction in terms of the revenue lost or realistically at the end of the day recovering you $20,000 back in your pocket by simply just returning that return rate by just a couple percentage points. So the math can actually add up to be some pretty significant dollars for you. Let's take it one step further and let's take a look at 5%. So if you reduce your return rate by to 43%, that's gonna yield you 10% orders back or 10% revenue back, or in this case, $50,000 back into your pocket. Or the final scenario, as you know, I always like to go through two or three scenarios here to show you the math, how, we, how it works. Let's take, for example, you were able to reduce your return rate all the way by 10%. So that would get you down to 38% territory. Well, now we're talking 50 to 1,500 orders returned as opposed to 1,900 orders returned. So we're talking a full 400 orders less being returned or basically a whole other $100,000 recovered back in your business or 10% of that overall million dollars. So as you can see, as I alluded to, getting your returns in shape or figuring out how to, you know, kind of get your return rate optimized is probably one of the biggest opportunities when we look at the order margin tree here, and probably one of the biggest opportunities that you as an e-commerce retailer 
can probably optimize for your particular business. So, you know, with a, without doing sort of an informal poll here, I'm just curious to see, do people know their return rate? If you have a return rate that you know of, maybe throw it in the chat window anonymously if you're not, uh, if you want to share it with me, but I'm curious to see what people's return rates are. So if you want to go ahead, take a look, take a moment, throw it into the Q and A and, uh, or the chat, but you know, that really kind of wraps up what today we were going to talk a bit about is returns. So as we looked at returns are a pretty big deal. They can add up to be a lot of value, a lot of dollars, but also a lot of revenue that you could be recovering back in your business. And so tomorrow we're going to look at the other single biggest contributor to your order margin, which is your discounts. A lot of people are offered discounts today. And again, as I've, I've mentioned, I'm a fan of them in some cases and in other cases not. So we'll talk a bit about more about discounts tomorrow, but anyways, that concludes our lesson today. So I want to thank you for being here. Thanks for making the time and grabbing a cup of coffee with me. And with that, I want to leave you with a quick message of asking you to be present today, connecting with others. And if you get a chance, try to make an impact in someone else's life. So with that, thanks and have a great day. I'll pause the recording now and take any questions.